Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today I've got a video I've been looking forward to make for quite a long time, ever since I got the thrust stand. It is the 32 class brushless motor shootout. So what I've done is accumulated a couple of 32 class motors, ranging from budget motors to high-end motors. And the idea is to take a look at them on the stand with two different configurations, a 5S configuration and a 3S configuration, take some measurements and find out if the expensive motors are worth it. That's the question on the table is, should we be paying the extra money for the more expensive brushless motors? Or are the more value oriented and budget motors sufficient for what we use them for? For the test, I'm gonna walk you through the procedure I plan on using. But just to give you a quick look at what's going to happen, I have a Tomcat G32, for example. I'm going to run this on a 5S setup with an 11x7 prop and a 3S setup with a 12x6 prop. All four motors will get the same eight tests. So I'm going to do four tests back-to-back -back on 5S with an 11x7 prop. Then I'm going to do four tests back-to-back -back with a 3S battery and a 12x6 prop. Here are the batteries that I'm going to use. I've labeled them 1, 2, 3, 4, the 5S, 1, 2, 3, 4 on 3S, and that's to make sure there's no confusion. I can make sure I use battery 1 for 1, 2, 3, 4 for, for each one um, on both the voltage setups. And then in be while I'm doing the motor change out and swapping over to another motor, these batteries will get topped back off. So the idea then is to look at, I'm gonna call it the heavyweight champ, which is really gonna be the, the most power generated with an 11.7 prop and a 5S battery. So we're going to call it a heavyweight, and then we're going to call it a lightweight, and then the overall champ will be the winner that has the highest combined score from these two categories. The motors I'm testing are all 32 class motors. This is a Leopard Hobby 4250, 800 kV. This is a Value Hobby G32, they call it a G-Force G32, an 800 kV motor. This is a Cobra 3520. It's a 32 class motor. They have a a motor reference chart that they publish and this is the one they recommend if you're looking for like a 32 class rim fire. So this is the 32, sorry, it's a 3520 820 kV by, by Cobra and this is the Tomcat. This is the only motor in the whole roundup that's actually a sponsored motor. This came from Bitco Hobby. When I told those guys that I was running a, a shootout, they wanted in and I waited for them to get their entry to me and it arrived. This is also the same motor that's going to be given away in the sweepstakes too, by the way. So this is a, this is a sponsored entry by Bitco Hobby. So they're pretty confident to be able to say, hey, I understand you're doing a motor shootout, we're in. So I was pretty thrilled that they were willing to rise to that challenge and get me a motor to test with. So that is a sponsored entry for that one. I want to stop right here. Before I get too far into this test, I want to cover some, some basics, okay? Because the last time I did some testing, I had some comments about efficiency, I had comments about calibrations, I had comments about different prop sizes, I had all these different suggestions. And while all that stuff is valid, I, I totally agree. I just want to stipulate right up front, I totally agree. There's lots of different ways to look at things, but I mean, just with four motors and two different size voltage tests and two props, you can imagine the amount of data I've got to collect and sift through, okay? So in order for a video like this to ever make it to fruition and be short enough for people to actually watch to the end, you have to put fences around this stuff, okay? So I'm putting fences around this test, all right? My fences, my evaluation, my criteria are going to be peak power. So I want to know which of these motors makes the most power with a given setup. I want to know the answer to that question. So who punches the hardest? I am going to look at peak efficiency, and what I mean by that is which motor delivers the best watts per amps. It's one thing to make a thousand watts, but if you're making that thousand watts at 70 amps and everybody else is making 990 watts at 30 amps, then the better motor is going to be the 30 amp motor because, yeah, sure, you can make the thousand watts, but you're killing your batteries and your flight time to do it. So watts per amp is important dollar per watt. So I'm just going to take the cost divided by the watts and tell you how much it costs per watt. And that'll give you an idea in terms of value. I'm going to look at power to weight because we fly airplanes. The less weight is better. You know, that's all there is to it. Lower weight is better. 
So if you can make more power with less weight, that's a, that's a secret to the little tuner cars and why they can zip around tracks so fast. So we are going to look at power to weight. I'm going to make a visual assessment of every motor. I'm just going to look at it. Now, by the way, I'm going to say right up front, that is subjective. Okay, that's just my opinion. It is not scientific. It's not based on any fact. It's just my visual assessment of each motor. Same thing with the audio assessment. I don't have any audio gear. I'm just going to listen to them when they spin up, and I'm going to tell you which one sounds the quietest, which one sounds like it's got the best bearing. So these two numbers are purely subjective. They're not objective measures. If you don't care for my analysis on those, then disregard it. You can just disregard it and disregard those points that I assign, and you can just look at the objective data and determine for yourself which one you like the best. And so once I've calculated those ranks, I'm going to rank the 5S test, and I'm going to rank the 3S test. Each category, the heavyweight and the lightweight, I'll pick a winner for those. And then I'm going to take their scores in total and give you a combined overall winner based on their combined scores. Okay? So here are the rules for the test. I will do four runs back to back with balanced LiPo batteries, and it will be one set of tests on 4S, or sorry, it'll be one set of tests on 5S, and then it'll be one set of tests on 3S. After that, the motor will be removed from the bench, and I'll move on to the next motor. I'll give four points for first place, three points for second, two points for third, one point for fourth. Uh, I'll be using 11.7 prop for 5S. I'll be using a 12.6 prop for 3S. But I'll just answer the question now, how did I determine that? Because I've already used these motors. I've used some of these motors, and I know that 11.7 on a 32 class motor or 5S is a really good place to be. It's a very efficient place to be, so that's what I'm going to use. I've got all these props. I could test this until the cows come home. But in order to rein this in and keep my fences intact, I have to limit the number of tests I do. I know an 11.7 APC is a good prop on a 32 class motor 5S. The objective assessment points will be ranked per place, i.e. first place assessment gets four points and so on. So that's it. That's the testing criteria. Now what I'm going to do is get a motor mounted and we're going to start doing the tests and collecting data. One other thing I'm going to tell you before I start this, a lot of times when I do a motor test, I like to, I like to do in post-production, I like to do the freeze frame and then circle the high, the value, and then you know put text in the bottom. And that's great on a single motor, but if I did that in this test, that would take me, <laughs> it would take me a very long time in post-production to get that done. So I will freeze the picture in post, I will look at the peak value, and if I don't get it exactly right during the testing, I'll correct it in post-production. You're just gonna have to take my word for it because I'm not gonna go through Let's see what amounts to eight times four, 32 different tests and do freeze frame and circles and all that because every one of those takes like 15 minutes to get right. So uh, I want to be able to get the video up sometime this year. So because of that, I'll be doing the freeze frame. I will post the results if hopefully you trust me enough to know that I'm giving you the most accurate number I can. I'll leave it at that. All right, guys, so let me take a break here to get the uh, camera put back up in the, in the tripod, and then I want to get the motor set up on the stand, and let's get to testing. All right, I've got the Tomcat G32 mounted. I'm going to calibrate the ESC. All right, this is 5-cell pack number one. I'm going to run this up and just do a quick little test to make sure I don't hear anything I don't like. And then after that, I'm going to punch it. I'll be looking for thrust and RPM. After the test, I'll slow things down and I'll grab the watts, amps, and volts off of the gauge. So let's just take a little spin up and see how it sounds. And then after that, we're going to go. All right, here we go. I'm going to be looking for thrust and RPM. Okay, I'm run number one for thrust. I saw 33.45 grams and I saw 13186 on the RPM. For watts, we've got 1093. Amps, 57.97. And volts, 18.56 on the SAG. 
Okay, this battery gets peaked. We'll get it charged back up, topped off. And now we will move on to five cell number two. By the way, I bought new batteries for this test. These batteries are not more than a week old. So I got new batteries because I wanted this to be, I didn't want to have a, thank you. I didn't want to have an IR question on my batteries. So these batteries are all relatively new, back, new packs. Few flights on them, that's it. Okay, here's test number two with battery number two. I'll be looking for thrust and RPM. Okay, I saw 3361 on the thrust, which is a new high, and I saw 13069 on the RPM. All right, and for the watts, I saw there's 1097, 1097, and the amps, 5833, and the volt sag was 18.62. The watts peak was actually 1,097.6, so I'm going to just put that in there. I don't think it'll matter at the end, but we'll put that in just to be fair. Okay, that's battery number two. And let's get started with battery number three. All right, battery number three. By the way, this is a brand new battery. I don't think it's ever been flown. It's brand, brand new. All right, here we go, test number three. Okay. I saw 3521 on the thrust and I saw 13340 on the RPM. So the thrust was a little low, RPM was a little high. Let's see what the power was. 1213, wow, wow. 1213.8 on the power. Amps were 61.06 .06. and volt sag was 1915. Wow, that's the new the new lead. Twelve hundred and thirteen point eight watts on that one. That's big. Okay, and the the peak wattage on that Tomcat is supposed to be a thousand. So that really produced some power that time. Okay, I'm gonna top off this battery, and here we go with test number four. Also brand new pack. This thing it's solid. That is brand new. Okay. All right, here we go, test number four. I'm looking for thrust and RPM. Okay, I saw 3487 that time on the thrust, and I saw 13332 on the RPM. And for power, we're at 1173.7. And on the amperage, we're at 60.81. And on the volts, we're 18.88. Okay, so the peak wattage on that one was 1213.8 at 61 amps. That's pretty strong. Okay, that's it for the Tomcat on the 5S. Now we're going to migrate the prop down, or up rather, to a 12.6 prop. And we're going to switch over to 3S. This is battery number one on 3S with a 12.6 APC prop on the Tomcat G32. All 
Okay, I saw 2184 on the thrust and I saw 9320 on the RPM for power. Ooh, really low. 385.6. Man, that's really low. 0.6. And 32.52 on the amps, yep, 32.52. And 11.70 on the Voltsman. Now, one thing that I'll throw out there, just, just so you understand, the reason I'm doing a 3S test is because every one of the manufacturers said in their published specs that their voltage range is between 3S and 5S, except for one, no, actually two. The Leopard said it could go up to 6S and the Value Hobby G32 said it could go up to 4S. Now, I've never placed any stock in voltage on motors. I've always focused on the current because in my opinion, that's what can damage the motors, the current. The voltage, I really don't think they care. So that's why I'm doing a 3S test is because they say that's the low end. Here's test number two. All right, this is battery number two, 3S with a 12.6 prop on the Tomcat G32. Okay, I saw 21.76 on the thrust and 93.37 on the RPM. For power, I saw 390, I see 390.2. 32.52 on the amps, again, same thing as last time, and 11.86 on the SAG. All right, this is test number three. Test number, battery number three on the G32 with the 12.6 prop. Okay, I saw 2078 on the thrust and I saw 9112 on the RPMs and it's looking like 358.2 on the power and 30.96 on the amperage and 1127 on the voltage. You know what's funny about that? <clears throat> this is the battery that's been used because I can feel just a slight amount of puff in there. Not much, very little. But this one, that's solid. This thing is brand new. I bet you this is the best performing battery. I'm just betting. This is battery number four, and that, that is a brand new battery. Okay, here we go. Okay, I saw 2183 on the thrust and I saw 9342 on the RPM. And I was right, that's the highest performing 3S we've got on the thrust anyway. So let's look at the power, 389, ooh, 389.8 and 32.9 on the amps and 11.7 on the SAG. So, nope, number two made 0.4 watts more. Okay, so there we go. That's the Tomcat. That is the Tomcat. Now we can move on. I need to pause and we'll move on to next motor up will be, the next motor up will be the Leopard. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back. I just ran a quick little KV test to make sure the uh, pull pairs were set correctly on this motor, and they are. It's 14 pull pairs, and that gave me 891 KV, which is very much in line with the advertised 800 KV, so that is acceptable. I know anything other than 14 pull pairs is going to increase the RPM, and we don't want to do that, so we're going to stick with the 14 pull pairs. Okay. I am back with the batteries. We've got everybody's peaked and charged. Right, just to make everybody happy, I'm gonna calibrate the ESC again. Here we go. Calibrate the ESC. 
and down to zero. Okay, ESC is calibrated. This is battery number one. I will be looking for thrust and RPM, and we'll pull peak after the run is over. And this is the Leopard 4250-800KV running an 11.7 APC prop. And, of course, the prop's going the wrong direction. <laughs> so i to change that. Hey, by the way, one real nice feature about this motor setup, they give you these little adapters. The con they're ESC converters, and I'm using them for the first time because the leads that came on this Leopard, the ESC leads, were, were heavier, like 3.5 millimeter leads. They were just bigger than the standard, and so the adapters actually came in handy and worked. I thought that was pretty cool. When I first went to plug it in, it didn't work, and I said, well, wait, I got adapters, and it worked out great. So kudos to them for... For doing that, I'm just going to reset this because I saw a negative eight on my scale, on my thrust scale. Okay, we're zeroed out, and let's see. We're, yeah, we're going the right direction this time. All right, so here we go. I'm looking for thrust and RPM here, and I'm going to run it up for just a second and then punch it. I want to make sure everything sounds okay. This is the first time I've run this motor. I've never run it before. So here we go. That sounded really, really good. All right, here we go. Thrust and RPM. Okay, I saw 3348 and 12920 on the RPM. So 3348 on the thrust. Watts, we hit 1022. 0.2 amps was 53.69 volts sagged at 18.58 okay that is run number one we'll get that battery topped off and we'll move on to battery number two by the way just if you're curious about it that battery started at 4.2 and with just that run I'm down to 4.16, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's drinking some energy, put it that way. Okay, here's battery number two. All right, I'm looking for thrust and RPM. Here we go. Okay, I saw 33.63 on the thrust and 12.890 on the RPM. For watts, we're looking at 1016.5 and 53.65 on the amps and 18.60 on the sag. Pretty consistent, very consistent. Okay, here comes run number three. This is a good battery. I mean, they're all good batteries, but I can tell. I can feel it. So I can feel just how... This is brand new. You can feel a brand new battery. Okay, here's number three. Here we go. Okay, I saw 3462 on the thrust, which is 100 grams more thrust than the next closest, so that's definitely a good battery. And on power, we're at 1,088. 0.5. And we are at 55.85 on the amps. And on the volts, 19.29 on the sag. So yeah, that's a strong battery. Okay, here's battery number four. Also a very good battery. I can, I can feel it. It's good. That's very, very new. Motor feels fine. No temperature concerns at all on the motor. That, I mean, if... 
I'd be honest with you, if I had a motor overheating with this, I wouldn't fly it because I, I'm much harder than that in real life on my airplanes. So uh, no, no concerns on temperature. Okay, here we go with thrust and RPM on the Leopard 4250 with the APC 11 by seven. Here we go. Man, that was, that was exact. Uh, 13, 3462 is the same exact thrust and the same RPM. I saw the same on both. So here, let's take a look at the power. 1086.0, yeah, this is almost identical. Very consistent. And 19, yep, thank you, thank you, Charger. Okay, 1950 on the volt sag. So yeah, very, very consistent. It looks like its peak power was 1088.5. Okay. Just need to top that one up. Let's get that migrated now over to a 3S. All right, here we go with the 3S setup. This is a 12.6 APC on the Leopard 4250. And you can see I've got battery number one. So here we go, test number one. Okay, I saw 2103 on the thrust and 9055 on the RPM. Thank you. And power was 352.8. And I got 29.38 on the amps and 11.86 on the sag. Battery number two. And here we go. All right. I saw 2084 on the thrust and I saw 9061 on the RPM. It looks like 347.7 on the watts, 28 point, we'll just call that 30, no, 29. 29 on the amps and 1185 on the sag. All right, this guy charged back up. And here we go, test number three. Pack number three, and this is the Leopard 4250. All right, I saw 2003 on the thrust and I saw 8941 on the RPM with 330.1 on the watts, 2819 on the amperage, and 11.55 on the sag. Battery number four. And here we go. Okay, I saw 91 something. I couldn't make out the last two digits, but I did see it at 9,100 RPM. So I'm gonna put it down. I'm just gonna run it real quick. 9140. Okay, 9140 on the RPM, 2094 on the thrust, and I've got 348.1 on the amps, 28.9, sorry, 348.1 on the watts, 28.99, we'll call it 29 on the amps, and on the voltage sag, 11.85. That is almost dead even with pack number two. All right, there we go. That's the Altitude Hobby Supplied Leopard 4250. So now I got to switch over. I think the next one up is going to be 
the Value Hobby G32. That's next. So I'm going to switch over to that and we'll get started on that test. Okay, that's going the right way. Let's do a KV test. All right, 881 KV, which is exactly where it's supposed to be. Okay. All right, I just did the KV test, and this motor came in at 881, exactly where it's supposed to be. All right, this is pack number one. I'm going to be looking for thrust and RPM on a new motor on the stand. I'm just going to run it real quick and make sure I don't see anything I don't like. And then I'll run it all the way up and we'll get our measurements. So just a quick little bump, see, see that everything is okay. Okay, everything looks good. Now here comes the full run. I'm looking for thrust and RPM. Holy smokes, 3550. <laughs> that was pretty strong. Okay, watts, 1065. 0. 0.8. 56.35 on the amps, 1856 on the volts. Okay, that's pack number one. All right, pack number two. Here we go. Okay, I saw 35.43 on the thrust and 13.094 on the RPMs, 1055.5 watts, 55.85 amps, and 18.44 on the sag. All right, that's pack number two. This is pack number three. This is a strong pack. Okay, here we go. Okay, I saw 36.73 on the thrust, 13.457 on the RPM, and 11.32 on the watts. Wow, strong. 11.32.3, 58.86 on the amps, and 19 on the sag. That's number three. Okay, this is pack number four on the Value Hobby GeForce G32. Here we go. Okay, I saw 3686 on the thrust and 13417 on the RPM. And the power is 1140.1. On 58.92 amps with 19.02 on sag. Okay, time to switch over to the three cell 126. Okay, here we go with the 3S testing. This is a 12.6 APC prop on the Value Hobby GeForce G32. Okay, I saw 2226 on the thrust and I saw 93.21 on the RPM, 370.6 on the amperage, 30.95, sorry. 370.6 on the wattage, 30.95 on the amperage, and 11.85 on the sag. 
pack number two. Very consistent, 2226 again on the thrust. I mean, that was exact. So it was 370.7 on the watts, 30.92 on the amps. Yeah, that's almost identical. And 11, eight, that, I mean, this is real close. Okay, it's about as close as you can get it. And here's number three. Got 348 on the power, 29.75 on the amps, and 1154 on the sag, with 2133 grams of thrust and 2194 on the RPM. And here is number four. All right, I saw 93.34 on the RPMs, 2200 on the thrust. That puts me at 375.9 on the power. 31, thank you. 31, 33 on the amperage, and 11.84 on the sag. Okay, that is it for the value hobby. G32, now I need to switch over and the last one up is the Cobra. All right, we're down to our final test. I've already run the KV check and we are at 872. The book says this is an 830, 820 KV, 820 KV motor. So within 50 KV, uh, that means we've got the poles set right. Same old thing, we're on the 11 by seven APC prop. I'm gonna run up and look for thrust and RPM. And this is battery pack number one. It's been topped off on the charger. So here we go. Okay, I saw 3261 on thrust with 12,813 on the RPM. For power, it was 951. Amperage, 49.02. And volts, 19.04. Okay, that is pack number one. I'm not charging anymore. We're done charging. So I will set that aside now. Pack number two. I saw a 3212 on the thrust with 12,632 on the RPM and for power, 930.6. Amperage, we're at 48.63. And volts, 18.73. Okay, that is pack number two. Pack number three, this is the strong one. Just want to show that's pack number three. Here we go. I saw 3289 on the thrust with 12,886 on the RPM with 985. Point seven on the power, 50.63 on the amps, and 19.15 on the volts. I gotta be, I gotta be honest with you, I'm seeing a little bit of an upset in the making. I don't know if you're paying attention to this. That's surprising to me. I gotta be honest with you, that is surprising. I didn't see this coming, but hey, let's do the last one. This is pack number four. Pack 
pack number four. And here we go. All right, I got 3314 on the thrust and 12,841, 999.5 on the power, 50.61 on the amps, and 19.45 on the voltage. Uh, there is definitely an upset in the making. This is going to be like, it's going to be an upset. I'm. I'm just predicting that right now. We're about to see an upset. I gotta crunch the numbers, but I can tell you from a straight peak power, uh, this is not the peak power champ. Let me tell you that. Okay, let's get the 12.6 prop mounted up, and we'll switch over to the 3S testing. So, <laughs> the Cobra. I've had very good experience with them, but I've never done a side-by-side. -side. And I haven't compared as many metrics as I'm comparing in this particular test. So it's very interesting what I see happening right now. All right, we're on the 12.6 prop. Here's pack number one. Okay, That's, uh, yeah, it was 1994. Can't read my own writing. 1994. I'm going to call it 8888 on the RPM. Okay, power 328. This isn't the highest one anyway. I already know that, so I'm not too worried about that one being a little off. 328.8. 27.4 on the amps, 11.85 on the sag. Okay, that's number one. Here is number two. I got 2003 on the thrust and I saw 8909 on the RPM. And for power, 322.9, we'll just call it 323. On the amps, 26.6. .6. And on the sag, 1186. Okay, number Okay, 1925 on the thrust, 8747 on the RPM, 305.9 on the power, 25.82 on the amps, and 11.69 on the volts. All right, last one. This is number four. I saw 2006 on the thrust, 8909 on the power, on the RPM, 322 on the watts, 26.57 on the amps, and 11.99 on the sag. All right. Well, that has been, <laughs> that's been an exercise, I'll tell you that, getting all those motors moved and switched and mount it up but we've done it we've done the shootout so now let's the, we have one more thing to do and, and then i got to go get some data together so i can finish up the video all right guys let's take a look at the aesthetics of the motor this is just again i, I mentioned this in the beginning of the video this is purely a subjective point of view right this is just me taking a look and telling you what i see um, I, I'm not getting any calipers out. I'm not measuring anything. I'm just taking a look at the motors and telling you what I what I see. So first thing I'll say is that this is the uh, Leopard 
the Leopard uh, 4250 800 kV. And I'll tell you, out of all the motors, I, I definitely grade this one very high on the finish. So they have this very glossy, kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a black chrome almost finish on the side of the motor with a laser etched le Leopard hobby on the sides, very subtle. The red anodized, or I, I guess that's anodized, finish on the outside looks really, really nice. And the you can see the machining. You can, if you run a nail, you can feel the grooves, but you, it's very difficult to see them. Yeah, you can, you can see them, but it's very difficult. They've done a really nice job machining the surface on that motor. As far as the windings go, when you look inside, one of the things that come, jumps off right off the bat to me is that wire. It's, and I know it's going to be very difficult to see that on the video, but it's a very fine grade of wire. And the windings look really well done. I mean, it's tight and I don't see any wire hopping or skips and all of the, um, all the insulating coating that they use inside looks very good. Um, I can't, I can't see anything from the outside looking in that, that looks concerning to me. It looks like it's very well done. And then finally they use this, um, kind of like, a, it feels like a, almost like a gel coat braided, braided wire on the outside. I don't know how well you can see that on the video, but bottom line is the fit, the fit and finish on this motor is very good. I would, I would consider it, uh, compared to, and I've seen a ton. I mean, you guys know how many motors I've been through. So I would say the fit and finish on this is first class. I mean, it's as good as anything else I've ever seen. Okay, that's the, that's the Leopard Hobby 32 class motor. All right, next up is the G-Force, the G G32. And I mean, right away on the outside, you can see where the, there's some cost savings because you can see it and feel it. Um, it's not particularly attractive. Like it's not a well-finished exterior, but it's not terrible either. I mean, you just see these grooves. The red anodized finish looks fine. There's no very sharp edges. Uh, I don't feel any grooves when I scratch there. The, the silicone wiring looks fine. It's got a nice silicone boot on the outside. When I look for, honestly, I gotta be honest with you, when I look inside this motor at the windings, I kind of see the same scenario that I saw on the, on the uh, Leopard. It just looks clean. I don't see anything inside that's concerning. Obviously it's functional. So overall, I'd say it's fine. Uh, I'd say compared to the visual aesthetics on the Leopard, the Leopard is preferable. This probably out of all the motors is probably the least attractive. So this one, I guess from a visual aesthetics point of view is probably gonna be on the bottom of the list. Okay, and here is the Tomcat, the G32. This is a good looking motor. Uh, one, of a one of my subscribers had mentioned that he, he had, and I have seen pictures of him, that he had a uh, G32 Tomcat that had a very blue, uh, shiny blue surround on the middle of the motor can, and I've seen that too. I'm not sure what they've done here. It doesn't feel like paint. Um, it, it almost feels like it's some kind of wrap. Um, but anyway, the, the markings are very clear. It's got a nice little graphic, Tomcat motor, 4320, 830 kV, 7-turn motor, G32, says airplane right there on the label. So. Regarding the top, the finish isn't as finely detailed as the Leopard, so you can see you can see machining grooves, but you can't you can't really feel them. It's not like it's just hard to describe. It's like they it almost it almost looks like some kind of diamond cut, like it's on purpose. So I, I mean, obviously this is a machine surface, but I don't know if you can see those cuts in there, but. It looks uniform all the way around, but when you compare that to say like the Leopard, the Leopard just looks far more, it's almost like they sanded it with a finer grain or they finished it with a finer blade or something. So it's not terrible. There's no sharp ed edges. On the inside, when I take a look on the inside, the, the way this can is arranged, you have a pretty good look at the windings. And I do see a little bit of like if you look at the other cans, all that, all the wire windings inside are perfectly uniform on this one. 
it looks like the machine got a little sideways there. And then there's some kind of material. I don't know what that is. It didn't, didn't appear to impact operations, but there's some kind of material on, on that wire. It's, I don't know what it is. I'm sure it's not damaged. It looks like, it, well, I know it's not because it was there from the minute I opened the box, one of the first things I noticed on this, plant, on this motor. Regarding the rest of it, one other observation I'll make is that the cross mount, it, if you notice, I had, when I ran that test, I had to have this little motor block because this, this cross mount did not fit on the thrust stand. All of the other motors did, but if you look at this, I don't know if, I don't know if I'll be able to give you a very accurate representation here, but if you look at the distance for the thrust stand or the, X, the cross plate mounting, it's, it's quite a bit wider than the other motors. So I'm not sure if you're able to pick that up on the screen or not. But if you look at the leopard up top, you can see how much farther over that uh, Tomcat goes. It's, it's quite a bit. In fact, here, I'll just measure it real quick. On my bench here, it is an inch and three quarter. And compared to the leopard, that's an inch and one quarter. So this is a full half inch wider from from this point to this point, a full half inch wider from edge to edge than the other X mounts. Other than that, the, the, uh, they use a, a real nice silicone braid wire again. It's, it's uh, I'm not sure, it, you know what? It feels like a sheath is what that feels like. I don't really want to cut it open because I'm giving this motor away in the sweepstakes. So I don't want to cut it open and look, but that feels like a sheathing on top of a wire underneath. But it looks nice and I'm sure it does a job. The uh, Shrink wrap is color matched and it goes right to the end. I mean, it's all, it's all fine. They do use hex keys, which by the way, I like that better than the screws. These screws, not that you should be taking your motors off too often, but these Phillips head screws, they have a tendency when you lock tight those in, they have a tendency to want to strip out the heads. They're, they use the soft metal. I do like the Allen key approach better. So I'll give them that, that, that is definitely, I would say from a hardware standpoint, the Tomcat was the most complete out of the bunch. I mean, it had, it, they even gave you the blind nuts for the mount, mounting this to the firewall. They gave you two different types of uh, collets, one compression, one, the bolt, one with the bolt on, and every screw you need, plus the Allen keys to drive them and the ESC uh, connector. So they have a very complete hardware kit with this motor. I would say on a fit and finish standpoint, I'd probably mark this very close to the middle, to the middle upper. So probably like a number two or a number three. That's where I'm, I'm thinking that one belongs. And then the Cobra, the Cobra, it, I think it's one of their key selling points. It has an excellent fit and finish. The black is just really cool and aggressive looking. It's kind of a, it's kind of a matte or satin black. It has a, you can see the Cobra logos emblazoned on the side or screen, or it's like, it's probably laser etched on the side there, but they do a real nice job with that. The anodized can pieces and the, and the bell housing pieces and the motor pieces, the base, all very smooth, no sharp edges at all. When I look inside at the windings, I see it, it looks pretty good, although the wire looks like a heavier gauge wire. And I do see a couple of crossovers. So, so I see a crossover right there. I see a crossover right there. So believe it or not, it's not wound as neatly or cleanly as the Leopard. It's just not, and the leopard uses the uh, so they're use the leopard. They're using more strands of a finer gauge wire. Oh, I'm going to try and get these both centered up in frame so you can see it real well. Yeah, maybe this is a better view. So the leopard uses a finer gauge wire, and there are no crossovers or. I don't know if crossovers is the right term for it, but it's just not as neatly wound on the Cobra as the leopard is. The Leopard is real clean in there, real clean. So that's it. I would say again, from a fit and finish standpoint, I think the Cobra aesthetically is very good. Okay, the shaft on the Leopard is eight millimeters, 8.13. On the Cobra, the shaft is only six millimeters. I wanna make sure you can see that, six millimeters. Six millimeters on the Cobra, on the Leopard, 
on the GeForce G32 7.8 as well. So definitely, definitely a, a very skinny prop shaft. And that's one of the things I've, I, I knew, I've known for quite a while about these Covers. They definitely use a very skinny prop shaft and a very small prop nut. It's never been a problem for me. That's not like I've spun a prop off in flight or anything like that, but just be aware of that. If that means anything to you, that this is a much thinner shaft. So there we go. I guess looking at this, I, I would say from a visual and aesthetics point of view, I would rank, I would rank them the Leopard probably first, the Cobra second, the Tomcat third, and the G-Force G32 I would put in fourth place out of these four motors. You know, that Leopard, uh, that Leopard's just a good looking motor. It, and that polished finish looks really nice on there. The anod anodized uh, or whatever whatever coloring process they use looks really good. You do see a little bit of machining on there, but you got to drag a nail across to feel it. It just looks it looks top shelf to me. Um, the Cobra is right behind it. It's got that satin black finish that looks really good. Comes together very nice. Uh, no complaints really with the Cobra. Uh, on the Tomcat, you can see where they're saving a little money by not quite finishing to the same level as some of these other motors in the G-Force. They, 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 the G-Force kind of mails it in with this can, i got to be honest with you. From the aesthetics point of view, definitely the Leopard uh, looks the best out of, out of all of them, with the Cobra being a, a close second. Again, subjective, my point of view. You may have a very different point of view. I'm going to head into the office and, and do some number crunching and get some documentation put together and then we'll come back out and wrap this video up. Well, if you've hung with me this long, all I can say is thanks. It's been quite an effort to put this video together, both in terms of resources and time and effort and coordination and logistics. So I do appreciate it if you've stuck with me this long. I've got a couple of talking points I'd like to address before I get to the numbers. And the first of those is the most powerful motor in the test was the Tomcat. Uh, it hit 1213.8 watts. The least powerful, and this is the one that just blows me away, was the Cobra at 999.5 watts. Now we're not talking margin of error. We used four different batteries. All motors got an opportunity to run on all batteries. All batteries were recharged and given time to rest. There was, there was sufficient time for the batteries to rest. I mean, we only really did one full throttle run for less than 20 seconds on each pack. So I don't think there is any reason the battery could be considered a failure at this point. And the Tomcat's number was 21 percentage points higher than the Cobra. It's just shocking, uh, shocking for a motor that positions itself as a premium motor and I buy I've bought a lot of Cobras. I got news for you. I'm going to I'm going to change my brand. I'm I'm going to look at, at at alternatives because honestly, the Cobras kind of let me down in terms of power creation. And it wasn't just power. So the most efficient motor as calculated by watts divided by amps was also the Tomcat. Now it probably helped that it had such a strong power output, but it also used its ampers efficiently, so it made it made efficient use of the power it consumed. The least efficient motor, not terribly surprised here, is the Value Hobbies G32, but there's only a 4% difference between the two. The, the Value Hobby G32 came in at 1903 compared to the Tomcat at 1988. So the reason I say I'm not terribly surprised is because I, I, I don't really think the Value Hobby G32 uses the best bearings because it's very loud it's it's compared to all the other motors it's very loud so i'm not i wasn't surprised to see that the the value hobby was less efficient than than the other motors now in terms of money the most expensive dollar per watt is the cobra it's six cents per watt the least expensive of course is the g32 at two cents per watt that's a 200 percent gap think about that when you look at the numbers that I'm about to post, it might be, it might take your breath away a little bit to think that the Cobra is positioning itself as a premium, they're charging a premium, and from a performance standpoint, they're not measuring up to value options. The best value to me in this clearly is a G32. It's a clear winner in terms of value. The, the, uh, and what, I gotta be clear here, it's the value hobby 
GeForce G32. That's the best value motor on this chart, bar none. Nobody even touches it. The Dark Horse is the Tomcat. Strong motor, mid-range price. I never saw it coming. I, I was unfamiliar with that motor in terms of power creation and comparing it to other motors that I do have experience with. I didn't know how it would stand up. So it was a surprise outcome to see how well the Tomcat G32 did in this roundup. And the biggest disappointment, honestly, is the Cobra. Because it just... I, I always had higher expectations in terms of being a strong, powerful, efficient motor because that's the reputation. But when I look at it compared to these others, I, I just don't I don't see it fleshed out in the data. So one thing I have to admit though is I have no long term data on the Tomcat, meaning I have no flight time on a Tomcat. So I can't speak to the longevity of that motor. I am comfortable with long-term recommendation on the Leopard, Cobra, and the Value Hobbies G32 because I've flown those motors in airplanes for a period of time, and I'm, f I'm comfortable with those. Right, so let's get into the numbers. Now, I'm not going to read every number on this chart to you, but I am going to highlight and discuss some key findings. The first thing you'll notice is that on the Tomcat G32 row, I highlighted the measured KV and that's because the measured KV came in 107 KV higher than the, the spec KV at 830. So I wanted to do a quick percentage comparison on the overage measured on the G32 compared to the other motors. And you can see the Leopard was 11% higher than its stated spec. The G32 10%, the Cobra only 6%, and the Tomcat 13 So while the Tomcat did measure higher on KV, it was 13% against 10 and 11 for the Value Hobby GeForce G32 and the Leopard. So I consider the difference between those two to be nominal or negligible. It's not significant enough to make me think that this motor is a ringer. All right. Now, the next thing that I want to point out is from a current standpoint the value hobby G32 pulled almost 60 amps the Tomcat did 61 and power generation the G32 both the G32 versions the value hobby and the Tomcat both came in within just a few percentage points of each other so when you look at it on a per dollar basis that makes the G32 a very compelling little motor but I got to give a, a Tip of the hat to the Tomcat G32 for producing that power. 1213. I mean, it pretty much stomped stomped the field. I mean, it, it won hands down. Another interesting little item, and I have no explanation for this. I can't explain this to you, so I, I just don't know what to say. Is that the Value Hobbies G32 produced 3,686 grams of thrust, which is 160 grams more than the next closest which is the tomcat i don't know how to explain that um, it did generate more rpm perhaps that has something to do with it but um, I, I, i'm at a loss as to how to explain that one the uh, weight the tomcat showed well when it comes to weight at only 208 grams and that tied for first with the leopard so the 3s testing i, I don't really care that much about it i did it because the manufacturers have a stated minimum voltage and 3s was it so i wanted to run it at the mins to see what what would happen and it turns out the tomcat performed well with the with the lower voltage options as well and the value hobby g32 was right behind it so what i like to what i like to see there is consistency and you'll also notice that the thrust was was right there 222 2000 226 for the for the G32 so consistent results at least all right let's take a look at the next page of data and what I want to point out on this is that this is the score this is a score sheet okay so if you look under the peak power column you'll see that the Tomcat came in first at 1213.8 on power the G32 from value hobby i should just call it the g-force to avoid confusion but the g-force came in at 3686 the peak efficiency came in at 19.88 for the tomcat g32 the uh, 
price per watt, the value hobby GeForce G32 is the low cost leader on this one for, for sure. The power to weight ratio, the Tomcat scored a win there as well at 5.84 to 1. And I also did the the visual inspection, the visual grading, and the audio grading. But when I started looking at the results, I really didn't like what I saw because I thought I saw the Leopard getting for purely aesthetic reasons, it racked up eight points. And so I did scoring in both with the aesthetic included and with the aesthetic removed. That's what that last the last two columns are about. You'll see the no AV. That means that's without the AV scores. So with the aesthetics factored in, the Leopard came in second and the Tomcat G32 came in first on the 5S test. If I take out the AV scores, then the Leopard and Value Hobby GeForce G32 switch places. So that ranking puts the Tomcat number one, the GeForce G32 at number two, the Leopard at number three, and the Cobra at number four. If you include the aesthetic rankings, the Tomcat G32 is one, the Leopard is number two, the Value Hobby G GeForce G32 is three, and the Cobra is four. So basically, the Leopard and Value Hobby GeForce G32 switch spaces or switch places if you count the, the subjective measures. On the 3S, it's very close to the same thing. The Leopard tied the, the Tomcat G32 for first place, but when you take the AV values out, and then it drops all the way down to third, and the Value Hobby GeForce G32 slides into second. On the third section down, there's a label called scoreboard. And the scoreboard shows the combined points for the 5S test and the 3S test. And when I combine those values, the G32, the Tomcat G32 comes in at 42 points. The Leopard comes in at 39 the GeForce G32 comes in at 34 and the Cobra lowly 26. So the rankings in that case are the Tomcat G32 number one, the Leopard number two, the Value Hobbies GeForce G32 is number three, and the Cobra is number four. If I take the AV scores out, then the Tomcat G32 maintains first, the GeForce G32 moves into second, the Leopard drops to third and the Cobra drops to fourth. So with that said, the Tomcat G32 is the winner of this shootout. And um, I feel very confident in those numbers. I feel very confident in that result because I did my level best to try and ensure a level playing field and a completely methodical approach. And um, I, I, gotta be, I gotta admit, I'm, I'm surprised at the result, mainly because I'm unfamiliar with the motor. But having seen what this motor can produce. I can assure you of one thing, I will be procuring more of these for future builds. And I'm almost a little jealous that I'm giving that Tomcat away. I almost want to give that Leopard away now, but but I won't do that. I'm going to go ahead and stick to my guns and, and, uh, and keep that Tomcat G32 in the sweepstakes. That's it guys, that's all I've got. Thanks again for sticking with me. I know this has been a super long video. I hope you appreciate the content. I had fun making this video for you. Take it easy. Ranging from a budgets, budgets. All right, I need to go crunch the numbers. I need to get all this data. Col, col, I, 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 I. <laughs>